Gas prices have gone up again, so it's time to drive less and start riding. But wait, before you flip the kickstand, you've got to keep in mind that motor vehicles are still on the same roadway as you are. They may be driving only three feet away from you. With one small mistake, you would be lying on the road with a shattered bicycle. In fact, it has been reported that among 33,000 deaths in traffic accidents a year, one out of 41 is a cyclist. So safety is one of the most important things for riding your bike. But first, here's a question for you. Which way are you going? I'm riding on the right-hand side of the road where, where we're supposed to be, at least um, that's where cyclists are expected to be traveling in the directions against traffic, which is a very common error that we see. And that is very dangerous because uh, drivers don't expect to see you on that side of the road. And when they're approaching an intersection, they don't look. If they're turning right, they don't look to the right. And if you happen to be coming from the right on the wrong side of the road, they only look to their left and you, you're probably gonna collide with the car. On the road, you have to consider bicycles a type of vehicle. This means cyclists must obey traffic rules just like motorists do. Stopping at the stop sign, stopping at red lights, and waiting until they turn green, not just to stop, check the intersection and go, is going to increase your safety. Also, it is very important for a cyclist to communicate with other drivers. Official hand signals, not informal gestures, are required by state law, and the most obvious way to show drivers which way you are going. We use the left hand and the left arm to signal all our right turn, left turn, and stop because the left side of our body is closest to traffic and it's the most visible. Right turn is your elbows bent at a 90 degree and your hand kind of points towards the sky. Left turn is your arm straight out going towards the left. And a stop is your elbows bent at a 90 and your hand points towards the ground. Drivers also have to be cautious about bicycles traveling on the same road. One of the most common bike-to-car collisions happens when a car makes a right turn without noticing a cyclist riding next to the car. Check your blind spots, absolutely. Slow down, give the cyclist some extra space when you're passing. Pretend the cyclist is another motor vehicle, and if there's a double yellow and you can't fit in that same lane, if the lane is too narrow to do that, without giving that cyclist about three or four feet, then don't pass them and pass that cyclist just as another motor vehicle. Bike and car collisions happen more often when a bicycle is traveling on the sidewalk. This is because bikes on the sidewalks are less visible to drivers. In fact, statistics show that riding on sidewalks causes more accidents than riding in the streets. If you're on a sidewalk riding a bicycle, motor vehicles don't look for faster moving objects on sidewalks. If you were in that bike lane, a lot of times they're marked with paint and a lot of times signs accompany so that it alerts drivers that there are other users on the road and there are bicycles on the road and that's where they normally look for them if they look for them. Although riding on sidewalks is not illegal, if you do, you have to be more cautious about cars driving nearby. Pedestrians, skateboarders, dogs, and children. By being cautious and obeying these traffic rules, you will surely have fun riding. However, no matter how safely you ride, an accident could happen to you. Even Officer Vonk, a certified bike instructor for the International Police Mountain Bike Association and the League of American Bicyclists, once had a life-threatening accident. But one thing saved Kathy's life, her helmet. I commute to work every day on a bicycle about 15 miles out and uh, I have been hit by a car and I've caved the entire windshield in. And if I wasn't wearing a helmet that day uh, over a year ago, I wouldn't be here today to talk to you about bicycle safety. You can die from falling just from a standing position and hitting your head on the concrete. They call it brain slosh. In fact, the cause of cyclist deaths or severe injuries are usually due to head injury. Although wearing a helmet is not mandatory, it is a sign of how responsible the cyclist is. In addition, for riding during hours of dusk or darkness, the headlight and rear red reflector are required by law. It is also recommended that bikers have bright clothing, retro reflective materials, and flashing lights for night rides. These uh, red rear flashing light 
goes into different flashing modes, but you can either clip this onto your handlebar or you can just clip it right onto your, the back of your helmet, which is what I do when I commute. Also for the white light to the front, you can either have it in headlight mode, and that's a dim, there's a bright, or flashing mode, which is what I usually use because I have pretty strong headlight in addition to this on my uh, handlebar itself. Retro reflective tape you can buy in rolls. This is a commuter backpack that I wear and you can see the whole back side of it. I just put retro reflective tape on it. Here's high-vis t-shirts. That high-vis color is probably the easiest color to see in the daylight. This is actually the jacket that I wear commuting. It's got both retro and high-vis stripes in it. It's actually an on-duty jacket too for rain because it's waterproof, but it's also the wicking material so it's comfortable to cycle in uh, when it's cold and you still sweat. Riding your bicycle is just like driving your car. Think safety first. Then you will have all the benefits from your bike ride, such as saving your money for gas, helping you stay healthy, and protecting the environment. And most importantly, you'll have fun. See you on the road. Thank you.